we pretty much live on the internet these days and we consume lots of information via our browsers, going to different websites and pulling down web pages. Traditionally, those web pages and websites are developed with HTML to provide the structural content of the information, cascading style sheets, which provides the presentational style, such as the colors and the fonts and the font sizes and how things are indented, and JavaScript for interactive sites. JavaScript providing the code behind for the interaction on the web page. HTML, of course, stands for Hypertext Markup Language. We might also get data from the cloud via a website by sending a message to a cloud database and having an API, often done with, with PHP, and that queries the database and sends the information that we're looking for back to our web browser. And while web developers become well-versed in JavaScript, we can use C Sharp to do the behavioral interaction on a web page rather than JavaScript using the Blazor framework. And Blazor is produced by Microsoft. Blazor uses the Razor components. And the name, word Blazor comes from the, the combination of browser and razor. And for whatever reason, they didn't want to do brazer, so they changed the L or the R out for now to make it blazer. And typically with blazer, we might also write an API in C sharp, although we could use PHP uh, APIs as well. But in the Microsoft ecosystem, we would usually probably use Microsoft Azure as housing our cloud database and use an API written in C sharp. There are two models in working with Blazor. One is Blazor Server. In a Blazor Server, all the content resides on the web, often in Azure. And it, we call the website and we get our HTML, CSS, and the Razor components sent down to the browser. And there's a constant interaction between the client browser and the Blazor server. So the nice thing about this is it works on both older and newer browsers. It loads very quickly, has a small footprint because we're simply sending the information that's needed in due time. And the code is secure on the server. The downside is it has to reside on a .NET server. It won't work, say, on an Apache server. It requires a constant connection. So if you lose your connection, say on your phone or mobile device, uh, your site's not going to work. And there's a high latency in that that interactivity has to communicate back to the server and get information back from the server. And so it can be disrupted a little bit by traffic on the internet. A second model is Blazor WebAssembly. Support for WebAssembly is built into modern browsers and allows us to use other interactive code besides JavaScript. And so here, the HTML, the CSS, and the Razor components, along with the uh, .NET WebAssembly runtime, is pushed to the browser, and all the interaction is happening locally. So therefore, once the site page and the contents are downloaded, if we lose connection with the server, the website still works. Unless, of course, it's needing to download data from the database, from an online database. So it has a very low latency in running. The only connection we need is the, that initial connection, and we can serve it from any server. It does not have to be a .NET server. The downside is it does require a newer browser that supports WebAssembly, sometimes we refer to it as WASM or WASM. It's a slower initial load because there's a large footprint. It's got to download that .NET WebAssembly runtime along with the contents for the web page. And the other downside is somebody can then go in and basically decompile the code. And of course, we still need an API to access the cloud data and the resources. So why learn Blazor? You're unsure if your target audience is using a Android device, an iOS device, a Windows PC, a Macintosh desktop, 
Blazor allows us to deploy across all platforms, including Linux or other devices. It's a great choice for an enterprise solution where you might have an, an intranet server just for your company. And it utilizes C Sharp for full stack development. So the only thing you really need to learn additional to C Sharp here would be learning HTML and CSS. And there's lots of resources for doing that. It works on the most recent browsers, including Edge, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera, and the Samsung internet. The great thing about Blazor though, is it gives you access to all the .NET libraries. That means you can use things like language integrated query for working with, with your data. It's extensible. There's lots of free component libraries out there and NuGet packages that we can bring in. Some of those are Blazorize, Radzen, MatBlazor, and AntBlazor. It's also extensible with commercial component libraries. Now these tend to be fairly expensive, but they're things like me here of Telerik, Syncfusion, Mudblazor, and that should be mudblazor.com, and devexpress.com. And then finally, if you still want to do some JavaScript stuff, you still can. It's interoperable with JavaScript. Next, we will look at starting a Blazor WebAssembly project, and it's going to give us a template that we can then modify, and we'll do that in, in the third video of this series. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the C Sharp Xamarin Programming Cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.